In 1984, Ray Stance took out a third mortgage on his childhood home. It was the house his parents had left him, the house where he had been born. Talked into an obscene 19% interest rate by his business partner, Peter Venkman, this alone would come to $95,000 over the first five years. While it was almost a certainty that Ray would default on his mortgages, Thanks to this startup capital, Ray Stantz, Peter Venkman, and Egon Spengler would establish a business involved in the most indispensable defense science of the next decade, the investigation and elimination of the paranormal. Over the course of their careers, these ghostbusters would not only prevent Ray's house from being seized by Manhattan City Bank, but also save the Earth from being dominated by an ancient eldritch Sumerian god and a 16th century Carpathian warlord. While the Ghostbusters would be responsible for dealing with cosmically powerful interdimensional forces that would terrify most mortals beyond their capacity for rational thought, it existed in the barest sense as a pest control company. After their grant was cancelled by Columbia University due to their unorthodox experiments, Stance, Venkman, and Spengler became convinced that they had developed the technology to successfully capture and contain ectoplasmic entities and decided to go into business for themselves. With their initial capital, Ray and Egon successfully developed an unlicensed nuclear accelerator capable of emitting a stream of positively charged ions, as well as an ecto-containment system custom-built to hold all vapors, entities, and slimers. The Ghostbusters established their headquarters in a decommissioned firehouse which, at the time of its purchase, featured serious metal fatigue in all load-bearing members, substandard wiring, a surrounding neighborhood reminiscent of a demilitarized zone, insufficient power, and a working fire pole. A 1959 Cadillac Miller Meteor ambulance conversion served as the Ecto-1, the Ghostbusters' primary means of transport. By the time their headquarters had been refurbished, the Ecto-1 restored, and Janine Melnitz hired to serve as an administrative assistant, the Ghostbusters were completely broke, with just enough petty cash left over to afford some Chinese takeout. Worse still, their marketing campaign had landed them just one paying customer. Yet in the space of a single night, all that would change. When a focused non-terminal repeating phantasm, also known as a Class 5 full roaming vapor, began terrorizing the Sedgwick Hotel, its dramatic and expensive capture by the Ghostbusters catapulted the group to become a media sensation and instant financial success. To help with their new sizable workload, Winston Zeddemore was hired as the group's fourth dedicated Ghostbuster alongside Stance, Venkman, and Spengler. As the entire eastern seaboard came alive with talks of incidents of paranormal activity, the Ghostbusters gradually became aware that their booming business was merely the prelude to a terrible, malevolent power that stood poised to enter their reality. When a representative from the Environmental Protection Agency deactivated the Ghostbusters containment system, a flood of psychokinetic energy was released across New York City. This heralded the arrival of Volga Sildrahar, Lord of the Sebulia, known to its cultists on Earth as Gozer the Gozerian, Gozer the Traveler, and Gozer the Destructor. Meeting this ancient god atop 550 Central Park West, Ray Stance accidentally caused Gozer to manifest a giant Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man, mascot of the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Corporation, to serve as humanity's destructor. With their traditional methods useless against this cosmic force, the Ghostbusters instead reversed the particle flow through the gate Gozer had used to enter their realm, crossing the streams of their proton packs and causing every molecule within Gozer's dimension to stop instantaneously and explode at the speed of light. While this victory had saved all of humanity, it also put the Ghostbusters out of a job. Faced with declining paranormal sightings and lawsuits over the destruction they had unleashed, the group was legally disbarred from the investigation of the supernatural. 
Ray would go on to own an occult bookstore and perform in children's birthday parties together with Winston, while Egon and Venkman conducted laboratory experiments and hosted a pseudo-psychic television show, respectively. Once again, the group became aware of and began investigating the presence of a supernatural psychomagnetheric slime that had begun to spread through New York's abandoned pneumatic transit lines. This slime was the manifestation of negative human emotions and manipulated by the spirit of Vigo von Homburg Deutschendor, Scourge of Carpathia and Sorrow of Moldavia, to facilitate his return to the mortal realm. Hoping to create a symbol of hope to offset the influences of Vigo, the Ghostbusters used positively charged mood slime and a pop remix of the 1967 song Higher and Higher to animate the Statue of Liberty and used its inspiring presence to rally New York citizens. Weakened by the city's positive emotions, Vigo was destroyed by the Ghostbusters through a combination of proton streams and mood slime once more solidifying the Ghostbusters as New York City's premier paranormal elimination service, and ready to believe you. The Templin Institute investigates alternate worlds and realities. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to directly support us, vote in polls to determine future topics, and receive some cool rewards, please consider pledging to our Patreon page.